nice stay no wind windsock is just about dead but guess what i'm doing i'm chasing raccoons it started um about a week ago i'm in here and i notice all over the place i notice insulation <clears throat> you can see up in the up there it all ripped up by the door over here it basically burrowed its way out the corner of the main door that was a week ago every single day more damage we um we've been chasing it with traps with food you name it a couple days ago over my garage I'll tell you, it's the last thing a pilot wants when their beautiful little bird is sitting there. And especially when you're talking about having a, a rag plane. You don't want raccoons. Now, this smart guy, he's been going up to the top, to the top of the loft of the hangar. So I'm climbing a ladder right now. We had two traps up here last night and he sprung both the traps. So just so you can see where I am, I'm, I'm in a loft above the, above the whole top. So the bottom line is he's eaten all the food that we gave him and sprung both the traps we had. And these are big. There's the trap right there. We had seeds, cat food. Now we're running tuna fish. We left a big mess. Ate everything, sprung the trap, and left. So I'm, I'm dealing with a wily raccoon. Now, you might think I'm overreacting a little bit, but not so many years ago, that Mooney was getting the engine redone, and it sat out in the field for a few weeks, and mice had moved in. I did everything under the sun to get the mice out. Traps, I put tin around the wheels and I was coming from Oshkosh with a cameraman sitting next to me pretty big guy and he started hitting the controls and it was at night over Lake Michigan probably 7,500 feet oh yelled I thought he was having a seizure he said, there's a mouse in my pants leg crawling up my inner pants, but he didn't say it quite like that. And he certainly didn't say it with that language. And he was in a full out panic. Uh. I calmed him down, did an emergency landing across the lake and he refused to get back in the plane. He took a bus back to uh, New York. And it made quite an impression how one little rodent can um, can kill you. So the idea of having a raccoon on board, <laughs> let's just say I don't want that to happen. This has really been a saga. I have to reluctantly admit raccoons are a hell of an adversary or one scrappy animal I never understood. Oh, the outside trap. Doesn't even look like the food's been touched. Let's take a look at the trap inside. Still a mess from yesterday. Nope, nothing. Doesn't look like the food's been touched here either. And there's only one place left. This is where it's been spending most of its time. Let's see where we're at. I see that the cage is, is moved. Oh, there's an animal in there. It shows, but we'll bring him down. Oh my God, it looks like an epic battle is taking place. There's my guy. Well, I've been waiting to meet you for a while there, mister. 
I feel bad. I know these animals don't have it easy. Raccoon against pilot. It's been a it's been a hell of a run. But he's not gonna die. Before I transport, I'm going to secure this guy. I don't want any way that this could open in the car, to put it mildly. So, some wire. And thank you, YouTube. I have learned a lot about raccoon trapping. You wire up a can of sardines hanging in the back and use so the animal can't really get its hands in to get to the food. That's what it comes down to. He's got to go into the trap to make that happen. 